Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 1543, written by Glitter Fresh Gore. The Remarkable Power of the Pink Handkerchief. I am 41 female. I have a daughter that is 23 female. We don't live together. She's all grown up, but we try to get together every couple of weeks and spend time together. Tonight we went shoe shopping and decided to stop next door to the shoe place at Ruby Tuesdays for dinner. We were hungry. We didn't really want Ruby Tuesday, but it was close to where we were shopping, and we were so hungry we just agreed we'd go there and get a quick bite. We get our table. We are seated by a woman wearing a pink handkerchief in her hair. She takes our drink orders and brings our drinks. A few minutes later, she takes our food orders. Time starts going by. The place has hardly anyone there, and my kid and I are just catching up. I notice the table next to me, three women, who appear to be maybe three generations of women, grandma, mom, adult daughter. While waiting for our meal, I notice their plates are empty, like totally empty, but they keep taking bites. There's no conversation. The youngest of the group is sitting very upright and smiling and nodding. The middle-aged one of the group says, we should just get this wrapped up and go. But there's nothing on our plates. I sort of gesture to my kid like, are you seeing this? Beck is playing for music over the speakers and I make a comment. Beck is sort of a weird choice for Ruby Tuesday. I quietly sing along. Dave Matthews' band plays nice, crash into me. My kid says, you know all these songs. I reply, I'm a 90s kid. We laugh. An hour later, we still have no food. I'm wondering, do I want to be a Karen and ask when our food will come out? I politely flag a server and say, hey, I have to work tomorrow. Can we just pay for the drinks we had? Two Dr. Peppers. And can you cancel my order? It's been an hour and we have to get going. She says yes, the woman in the pink handkerchief. She walks past me. And I swear to God, I really do. She walks past me five seconds later, stops, says, your order should be out soon. I glance at my kid with that knowing look. My kid says quietly, I'm starting to feel really anxious. Can we leave? I nod, relieved it wasn't just me feeling weird. Dave Matthews' crash into me plays again. We are uncomfortable. The pink handkerchief server comes back around and says, The kitchen is backed up. Please don't leave. I insist that we have to go. I pay tip and we leave. The whole vibe changed when we stepped outside. We spent the whole car ride asking, Did you see that? What the hell just happened? Everything felt bad. I'm not even hungry anymore considering I didn't even eat. Everything was really, really weird. My kid noticed it too. Quezon's file 1543. The remarkable power of the pink handkerchief. It's like seeing a fusion of different moments in time. So you saw people eating in the restaurant. The food wasn't served on time. The restaurant was backed up. And then people were eating even though there was nothing on their plates. They were having conversations about things that don't make sense. It's almost like the diner in Stargate SG-1 where Daniel is dead, but he's really in the realm between life and death. Maybe there's something similar. Maybe it's not just quantum immortality. Maybe when you exhaust all possible avenues of other universes in the multiverse, then you go to this diner, and it's a buffer area where you're reset back in time, or just allowed to continue living in some format. Just an idea, though, because you did have your daughter with you, so did you both die? I don't know. But the most interesting fact is how you instantly felt better as soon as leaving. It's like you re-entered your dimension. Or there's another example too. I saw a video of a girl that went to a pond or a lake or something. She had two glass boxes. One she put in the water and then another one above it. And then she applied pressure to push water up into the extra glass box that was above the water level. And then put fish food up in there. So fish would enter in and then they would be able to see an entirely new world because fish never see above water other than that. So now they're able to perceive this new environment that is similar but yet entirely different. It's like other beings trying to create a pocket dimension where we can sort of exist in, but it's not quite right for us. Or like in Interstellar, where the beings, the future us or aliens, wasn't very clear, constructed a new reality just in the sense that we could perceive it through our limited three dimensions, four dimensions with time. Maybe something like that's going on. Maybe it's almost like trying to interact with us, but not being able to. Case file number 1544, written by In the Hideout. 
another vanishing phone. One day, last winter, I walked over to my parents' house. They were not home at the time and I don't actually live there and don't have the key. So I waited in the backyard for someone to arrive. I was kind of tired at the time, so I laid down on the ground. I was laying on my side and my phone started to feel uncomfortable in my pocket. I take it out of my pocket and place it right in front of me on the short grass. Also, since it's the winter, the grass is pretty much barren and certainly not overgrown at all. Inexplicably, the phone literally vanishes into thin air right before my eyes. It's weird because at the same time my vision kind of shifted like 90 degrees so that I was instead looking at the sky when I had been looking to my side. This is when the phone disappeared because when I looked to my side, where I had been looking just a moment before, the phone is no longer there. All this happened within about two seconds. I had no idea what to make of this. Honestly, at the time, my brain just couldn't process what was happening, so despite the absurdity of it, I just thought to myself, whatever. So I roll over on my other side and this time my wallet is making me uncomfortable. So I take it out as well and do the same thing. And the exact same scenario occurs again, just on the other side, and it vanishes into thin air. At this point, I'm going insane, so I stand up to look for both items and they are completely gone. Nowhere to be found, never found again. I was not intoxicated on drugs, drunk or anything like that. I could not have hallucinated having my phone and wallet to begin with because I had them on the walk over and had actually used my phone on the way over. As well as use my wallet to buy something at the store and take the bus. The laws of physics were manipulated, 100% undeniable fact. Seemingly impossible, but how can something continue to be impossible once it happens? Actually, there is something called quantum tunneling that maybe could possibly explain it, if we needed a true scientific explanation. But the chances are just so remote that I conclude that indeed the laws of physics can be manipulated by some unknown forces. I'm just trying to figure out why and how. Who the hell stole my crap? starting to believe that in my current human form, it may be impossible to find out the actual answers to these questions. But there must be some entity or entities somewhere in the cosmos that know. Quesant Sufa 1544 Another vanishing phone. Oh, I like that line a lot. The entities in the cosmos that know. Indeed. In the cosmos, in the universe, or even transcending it above the universe in a different dimension, We'll never know, or maybe maybe we'll know but not right away. And I think that applies in most cases. I think there is entities, will. I like to attribute it to some sort of will. Some sentient being's desire manifested in our reality. But it's so specific and random, the objects it takes from. Phones, wallets in this case. It's more like some entity wanted you to know that it existed. It had the ability to influence your reality. Sort of twisting your perception. You were looking at it and then you were looking up without realizing you made a movement to look up. That is weird, isn't it? Now time for the quote of the day. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Martin Luther King Jr. Well, I certainly agree with this quote. How could you not? The words of our enemies will impact us in the moment, but we don't really think about them long term. But if our friends, our family, they disown us or they just forget about us. They don't talk to us anymore. How could that not impact you? I mean, unless you're a complete loner. I mean, even I'm introverted, but I still have some friends. And if they just, if I did something so egregious that they stopped talking to me, they put me in the realm of silence, then that's the grandest judgment. There's a line like that in uh, Diablo 4, which the cinematics and the story I actually quite enjoyed. It's where Lilith talks to an angel, and the angel has fallen. He wants to get back to heaven, and Lilith says, after he asks them, begs them, why won't you talk to me? Why, what do I have to do? And she simply says that silence is their judgment, which is a perfect line. <laughs> Very good. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Kinetic Symphony, signing off.